What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today we're unboxing and reviewing potentially one of the creepiest products we've ever unboxed and reviewed on this channel. So in today's video we are checking out the brand new collaboration between Ray-Ban and Facebook, the Ray-Ban Stories. Now as you guys can tell I actually grabbed the Wayfarer variant and there are three different variants of this pair of smart glasses. So what we're going to do in today's video is unbox this pair of Ray-Ban Stories in the Wayfarer variant. I'm going to show you guys everything that comes in the box and what you get for the price of $299. And then I'm going to wear them around for the day and see if I actually like them and see if there's something that I'm going to keep or whether there's something I'm going to return because they're useless. And honestly, I'm trying to go into this with a very open mind because in the back of my head, I'm thinking, wow, these are kind of creepy because you're filming things with your glasses. Now, this isn't the first time we've had cameras on glasses before. We've had the Snapchat spectacles. We've also had the, uh, the Google headgear, as I like to call it, which also had a camera, but this is the first time that we've had cameras on a pair of glasses that look very unassuming and on a brand that I actually really, really like. And actually, to give you guys some backstory on my relationship with Ray-Ban, which sounds weirder than it actually is, I worked at Sunglass Hut for like two years in college, and uh, Ray-Ban was my favorite brand of glasses. I mean, it makes sense. It's one of the most popular. It's one of the simplest and easy to wear, but I just love everything about Ray-Ban. I think they kill it. So um, I'm really excited to check these out, and I'm glad that Facebook decided to collaborate with Ray-Ban, or I guess Luxottica is the name of the overall brand to make their first pair of smart glasses. But before we rip these open, let's take a quick look at the outside of the box to see if there's anything that's really noteworthy or noticeable. It looks metallic in this plastic, but I think it's more of like a matte silver color. You've got Ray-Ban Facebook on the top, you've got Wayfarer's Ray-Ban Stories on the sides, and then on the bottom you've got all the specs like the color glasses that I got and the uh well, that's pretty much it. The color of glasses that I got and like the serial number. But let me hold this up to the camera just so you guys get a good visual of peeling off this plastic because that's always the best part. There we go. So here's the box without the plastic. And before we actually pull it out, it looks like there's another pull tab right here that we've got to remove. It says Ray-Ban Stories Wayfair shiny black with green lenses, which I think is the standard configuration if you're getting the Ray-Ban Stories. Now there are three different models. There's the Wayfair, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with. There's the round, which is essentially just a circular pair of glasses. And then there's the Meteor, which is kind of like a squared off version of the round, sort of in between the round and the Wayfair. Now of course, because this is a pair of sunglasses made by a big sunglass company, there are a ton of different options when it comes to colors and lens colors. You do also have the option to uh, put in your own prescription lenses and that's something that they actually say on their website that you should do before you actually get the glasses in hand because if you put in your own prescription lenses after you buy them the problem is is that it voids the warranty so if you're gonna get prescription lenses put in these make sure to do it during checkout rather than after you get them in hand but I just opted for these standard green lenses these aren't polarized and if you guys know anything about Sunglasses, polarized is always better because it kind of, well essentially what it is is there's crystals on the outside of the sunglasses, it sounds ridiculous but it's true, there's crystals aligned on the outside of the lens, it's like a coating, and uh, the way that they're aligned it actually stops certain reflections, so when you're on the water, um, you don't get like sun rays bouncing back up at you, you don't get uh, reflections off cars and things like that, it's a nuts experience, but usually they're a little bit more expensive, and I can't remember the exact reason why I didn't opt for the polarized, but I think it's just because they were already so expensive as is. Now I'm super excited to check these out, I love new sunglasses. Ray-Ban Facebook right there on the top. It's split in half. Ooh, look at this. So you've got your black Ray-Ban case, which is significantly nicer than any of the other Ray-Ban cases that I've ever owned. Now it comes with a uh, seemingly faux leather finish, and I believe it's also a charging case because it's got the uh, USB-C port right there in the front and the Ray-Ban logo on the top. But we're not going to worry about this just yet. We're going to take a look at what else is inside the box. So the first thing you get is this little uh, cardboard box that says download the Facebook View app, which I've already done. We'll get into that later. Um, and I think inside here, you've probably got cables or something. You've got the warranty and safety information and also a nice uh, sunglass bag, which is actually pretty cool. And then underneath that, you've got your presumably USB-C charging cable. Let's see, yes. Double-ended USB-C, very nice. Pretty standard at this point. Now let's take a look at the glasses themselves, which is obviously the thing that I'm most excited to check out. I've gotta say, at first glance, these look like standard Wayfarers, like genuinely having trouble putting them all in my hat, but there you go. But the first thing that you will notice is that they're actually a little bit thicker than standard Wayfarers. And not only that, the thing that I just noticed was that inside this little, uh, this little crease thing right here, you've got a little charging port, which um, is actually how it charges on the case. This little charging guy connects to this magnetic charging guy right there on the side of the case and uh, that creates the charging connection. But looking at these inside the box, I am noticing that instead of the jewel that you have on the side of the Wayfarers, you've got the little cameras, which are pretty creepy, I'm not gonna lie. And then it looks like on the side of the left arm, you've got a little power switch. Let me flip that on, see if they're 
charged up. I have no idea. I mean, there's no screen on this, so I have no idea if they're on or not. And then on the right arm, you've got the capture button, which I believe turns on the glasses and then also turns on a little LED right there. So I think at this point, it's time to charge these guys up, connect them to the app, and then uh, take them for a road test. Okay, so I've been wearing these for the entire day, about eight hours total from when I unboxed these. And uh, I've got to say, they are surprisingly all right. So I'm going to be honest, when I first read about these, I was interested, but not blown away. This is a product that seems very like experimental. It seems like something that is not going to work for everybody and not everyone needs. In fact, in my opinion, I don't think really anyone needs these. But I will say that it's well done for what it is. And uh, I was impressed by a few different features. So before we dive into any of the tech specs of the Ray-Ban stories, I've got to say that as far as a pair of sunglasses goes, this is pretty much your standard pair of Ray-Bans, which is really cool to see. The build quality of these Ray-Bans was really solid. It seemed exactly like all my other pairs of Ray-Bans. The only difference was that the arms were slightly thicker and that it was ever so slightly heavier, but not by much. I mean, barely noticeably. And to be honest, I was very impressed by that. It's amazing to see them fit so much tech into such a small frame, like literally a small frame. They were able to fit two cameras, speakers, microphones, Bluetooth, all sorts of stuff into these tiny little frames, and I'm just blown away by it. And honestly, I just love Wayfarers. I love the way they look. I think they look great on really anybody, no matter what your face shape is. And I feel like you can't go wrong with a pair. But if you're just looking to grab a pair of Wayfarers because you like the way that they look, there are a lot of places to grab them for much cheaper without the tech. You can even find pairs on sale in certain colorways. So I, I just feel like if you're buying it specifically for the aesthetics, this isn't the way to go. So to dive into my eight hours of use with the Ray-Ban stories, the first thing I had to do was obviously sync and charge. And I've got to say that was a pretty easy process. Obviously charging was just putting the headphones inside this leather case, which I've got to say is very well built. And I was really happy with how sturdy it feels. It's got a built-in battery so you can charge up the case so that when you're on the go, you can charge up your glasses without having to actually plug this into the wall, which is obviously a nice touch, but I think most wireless headphones do that as well. It is definitely larger than a standard sunglasses case, so it's going to be hard to Pocket. Like, you can't just throw this in a pocket unless you've got giant pockets, but throwing it in a bag is no problem. The only downside is that this leather case seems like it'll get worn and scratched really easily, and if that's something that bothers you, you might have to get a case for your case. <laughs> Also, there's an LED indicator on the case to let you know whether your glasses are charging or whether they're fully charged or whether the case is fully charged, all that sort of good stuff, pretty much standard fare. But getting into the actual glasses themselves, the syncing process was very easy. All you had to do is flip the switch, the power switch right there to Bluetooth connectivity mode, which is the same way you do it for a lot of other sort of wireless accessories by just pushing it and holding it. Your phone connects if you have the Facebook View app and it kind of guides you through the setup process. One downside if you don't like Facebook or just don't have a Facebook is that these were require you to have a Facebook account to actually create a Facebook view account so you can view your photos. Otherwise, you're kind of out of luck. You might have to make a Facebook account just to use these glasses. I guess to be fair though, if you don't like Facebook because of privacy concerns, you're probably not going to buy a pair of sunglasses that have cameras on them. So there's that. The app itself is very easy to use. I will say that's probably because it's a very simple app. It doesn't have a lot of features. You can download your photos and videos from your glasses onto the app and then have that sync with your photos and your phone. So that's a nice touch. Speaking of photos and videos, the camera cameras that you find on the Ray-Ban stories are dual 5 megapixel cameras. And I've got to say, for both picture quality and for video quality, they kind of suck. I mean, I don't know what I was expecting because it's a pair of sunglasses, but I've got to say it is nowhere near any modern smartphone's camera capabilities. If you're looking to get good video and good photos, use your camera or use your professional camera if you have one. Don't use these. These are really only for capturing the moment, as Facebook likes to say, which is kind of a bummer. And that was sort of the main use case I wanted to have for these was to go to yard sales and capture my yard sale shopping for my sneaker series if you guys watch my main channel. But unfortunately, it's really not great. Here are some photo samples that I took as well as some video samples. The one thing that I found about the photo samples is that there seems to be this weird sort of processing glow around my dog in these photos. Ben's fur just seems to be very smoothed out and then he also has this interesting sort of like light green halo around the grass around him which is super weird. I'm assuming that's from the camera processing or the apps processing but not a great look. As far as the video, the fact that there is video and a mic is pretty impressive in a pair of sunglasses. However, the actual quality of the video and the mic is lacking. From what I found, the video quality is pretty rough. It's not very pixelated, but it seems like the reason it's not pixelated is because there's a lot of smoothing going on. Not only that, it can't handle whites very well. Like whites get blown out very, very easily, especially in direct sunlight, which to be fair is, I guess, a more common problem for cameras, but it's especially bad on these glasses. I keep almost calling them headphones, but they're glasses. Something else that I should mention is that the 
video clips that these glasses are capable of taking are only 30 seconds long. It will cut you off at 30 seconds regardless of what is going on and that's unfortunate because say something happens right after the 30 second mark and you miss it just because you think your glasses are still filming. Now one thing I really appreciated about these glasses is that they do actually have an LED indicator on the front of the glasses right next to the lens when they're filming and taking photos as well as right next to your eye on the inside of the frame so that you can see when it's filming. This is sort of Facebook and Ray-Ban's way of sort of mitigating the privacy concerns so that if you see someone's glasses with a little white LED indicator on the front, you know that they're filming something so you might want to be a little bit more careful about whatever you do or say or show off. Now to be fair, it is a very subtle detail and you might not even realize that it's an LED indicator if you're looking at it because it's not a flashing LED, it's just kind of a solid LED so it might even look like part of the glasses themselves which is a little bit weird but uh, it's nice that they at least have something so that you can't like do something really creepy. I was gonna think of something, but uh, I just don't even wanna go in that direction. <laughs> I will say though that the LED indicator on the inside of the glasses that lets you know that you're filming is a little distracting. It's kinda up here in your peripherals and it almost looks like the sun is kinda coming in from over your glasses, but uh, it's a noticeable detail, but it's good that they have it just so that you know you're filming because there were a couple times where uh, I turned it on by accident and didn't even realize I was filming until I saw the LED indicator. I will say it's definitely something that we'll see a lot of in the future most likely. If we get a lot of smart glasses like that, I'm sure we're gonna have a lot of peripheral notifications, which uh, makes sense because it's something that you don't want directly in front of your eyes, but you also wanna know something's going on. So I'm sure we're gonna see more of that as we get smarter and smarter glasses. As far as actually capturing photos with these glasses, there are two ways to do that. One is by using this physical button on the right arm, which you long press to take a photo, and then you tap once to turn on recording and tap again to turn off video recording. The other way is using their virtual assistant, which is Facebook, apparently. So you go, hey Facebook, start recording, and it starts recording. And I've gotta say their hey Facebook feature, I'm not censoring it here because I don't think anyone really has any Facebook smart devices. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but it is what it is. Um, their hey Facebook feature actually works really well, and it pretty much picked up on every command that I gave it with no issues. Now to be fair, from what I could tell, it couldn't do anything other than start and stop the camera, but it's nice to know that you have that option if your hands are full. Now one question you may have about these spy glasses, I'm calling them now, is how much memory do these have? Because at the end of the day, they've got a camera on them so they must be storing photos and videos somewhere. So unfortunately there isn't a lot of memory on these glasses as you probably could have expected because the arms of these glasses are so thin and that's where the memory is. Apparently you can store 500 photos and 36 30 second video clips. Definitely not a lot but you are able to offload that onto the app so that you have more storage and even though it is kind of a concern, it's not a crazy concern because usually when you're wearing these glasses, you're gonna have your phone with you close by. Now the feature that I found the most compelling about these glasses is a feature that has been available on other smart glasses for a while now, specifically the Bose smart glasses. And that of course is the wireless headphone component of these glasses, which allows you to listen to media off your phone with just the glasses. Now unlike the Bose smart frames, these don't utilize any kind of bone conductive audio. It's all actually literally a speaker in the arm of the glasses. And as I'm sure you could have guessed, the audio quality sucks. It sucks. I'm gonna be honest. It was not good. The high is clipped all the time. In fact, even when I was listening to just podcasts and someone said, puh, too loud, it clipped. Not only that, when you listen to songs with a lot of bass, there was no bass. It works for what it is. I think the use case that I could see with these glasses is that if you go to the beach and you want to listen to a podcast, but you don't want to bring an extra set of headphones, you've got your sunglasses and you've got your headphones all in one, which is not bad. Oh, something else to note, if you do take these to the beach, they are definitely not waterproof and you do not want to get these wet. Not only that, but because these glasses are just kind of projecting sound at your ears because you've got speakers, there is a decent amount of sound bleed. I will say though that because the speakers don't get very loud, it's not that bad, but uh, it's definitely there. In fact, I'll show you guys. Now in sort of an interesting turn of events, I was actually pretty surprised by the sound quality on phone calls, and not only that, also the microphone quality on phone calls. It was impressive. It wasn't great, but it was much better than I was expecting. So the last thing I wanted to cover in my review of the Ray-Ban stories is the battery life. And uh, as you probably would have expected, the battery life is crap. So Facebook and Ray-Ban say that the Ray-Ban story should last six hours with intermittent use, and uh, I've gotta be honest, I was using these pretty intermittently, like maybe once an hour, and um, they died within two hours. And that was the second time that I charged these. The first time that I charged these, I was using the camera pretty much nonstop, and they died in about 30 minutes. I guess the good news is though, they are still a pair of sunglasses when they die, so at least you still have some function from them. So the pair that I got, which is the standard pair with non-polarized lenses, comes in at $299. There is actually an option for polarized lenses, and it's honestly not even that much more expensive. It's $30 more, it's $329 versus $299, and if you are buying these to wear on a regular basis, I would definitely recommend going polarized 
categorized. And then the final configuration that you can go with on these glasses are transition lenses, which cost $379. And if you're not familiar with transition lenses, essentially what they do is allow you to transition between standard glasses and sunglasses depending on the lighting environment around you. So that's almost 400 bucks, but I guess it kind of makes sense because those lenses are already pretty expensive anyway. But I will have to say 400 bucks, you could buy a smartphone or really anything else with a better camera and with better speakers. So I guess to round off this honest review of the Ray-Ban stories, would I buy these again? Probably not. In fact, to answer the question that I asked at the beginning of the video, I will probably be returning these just because I don't need to spend $300 on a pair of Ray-Bans that are essentially just regular sunglasses because they die within like 30 minutes to an hour anyway. In fact, if you buy these to use the smart features on these glasses, they will be in the charging case a lot because these die very, very quickly. In my opinion, the Ray-Ban stories aren't for the normal person. This almost feels like a prototype or experimental product. It's the kind of thing that you put out there in hopes that you can learn from it and create even better smart glasses in the future. And eventually, Facebook wants to create AR glasses. And so this is the first step towards that. And with that in mind, it is impressive that they created a pair of smart glasses that can sell to the masses and that they probably created a bunch of but it's not that usable and it's not something that really creates a high quality video or audio experience and because of that, I just don't think it's worth the price. And like I said, most of the time, these will just be regular sunglasses and for 50 to $100 over the price of a standard pair of sunglasses, I just don't think it's worth it. But at this point, I would love to know your thoughts on the Ray-Ban stories and whether you're planning to grab a pair for yourself or whether you already have grabbed a pair for yourself. So make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and I'll see you all in the next one.